Hello everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Techie Tuesdays. This is a pre-recorded premiere of Techie Tuesdays this week. Um, so in this Techie Tuesdays, we'll be focusing on how to extract IOCs from malware, um, specifically to do with network actions, seen in storyline and deep visibility. Now it's quite a simple process to extract IOCs. So what we'll do, we'll do two pieces of live malware from Malware Bazaar. Um, and so currently my setup is in a virtual environment that's segregated from my production, obviously. I'm in detect detect so we can simply see the malware running. And I'm just doing it um, simply so I can see how the malware runs. I'm not trying to protect anything. I'm trying to effectively destroy the machine and show you guys how this all works. So I currently am in my group scope of Windows OS. Um, and my endpoint is just a normal Windows 10 VM. Nothing too special about it. And let's have a look on our VM here. It's already have malware bazaar open. This is um, uh, a malware threat feed, massive like malware database. Anyone can submit their malware to here, whether they've created it, whether they, they shouldn't create the malware, but if they've um, they, if they found it online somewhere. On, some sort of dodgy forums or, um, for instance, last Techie Tuesdays was the Redline Stealer. You can find a Redline Stealer instance pretty much anywhere on YouTube if you type in like game hack, for instance. Um, and you, if you filter by recent, you'll be able to see a bunch of videos advertising game hacks, but really they're just Redline Stealer malware. Um, but I su definitely suggest you have a look at that at, uh, Techie Tuesdays episode from last week. It's really interesting. Um, so I haven't put any filters on my search yet, um, let's maximize this. So there's no filters and this is just a threat feed of loads of different types of malware. Um, the malware that we want to specifically be looking at are most likely info stealers or rats, um, remote access trojans and that's because they have to establish a network connection to exfiltrate the data or um, get, give remote control to the C2 server. Let's have a look through here. Most of these are untagged just with EXE. There you go, Rimcos rack. Let's hope this is built for Windows. Um, so let's quickly research what Remcos Rat is. Um, so it's uh, there's actually a this reminds me now. So you can actually like purchase Remcos as a remote control surveillance surveillance software. Um, however, it, it's it's legal in the fact that it's still around, but if you use it illegally, that's why it's illegal. Um, it'll be very interesting to see how this works. Um, I know there was a company that Google were trying to fire away at for effectively selling uh, spyware. Um, I'm surprised this is even up. Um, yeah, you can see the NHS have made this uh, cyber alerts and run cross wrap. So let's have a look. Let's down it from our wow, wow, bizarre. And I do have Sentinel one installed. You can see just down there. Uh, it's open up the seven zip. This one. And to allow Sentinel-1 to perform static analysis on the EXE, I can drag and, drag and drop it into our desktop. The password for Malvazar is infected. And it should move the file there. Sentinel-1 has not said anything so far. Oh, it has, there you go, straight away. Um, you can see straight away it's infected on the uh, management console. So let's go to incidents and see what it's saying. Um, so it's just simply said on right static AI suspicious. So it's potentially unwanted application. Um, 
So this is uh, something that you potentially don't want on your machine. Let's, which obviously that's the case because it's a remote access trojan. Virus total will say it's 100% confidence. Let's um, move virus total quickly. Yep, so it's completely blowing everything up. Um, VM range of security, 100% room costs, backdoor injector. Yep, yep, yep. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and run this. Um, nothing showed up on the screen besides a malicious threat file executed. Um, this will show up as another threat on the Sentinel management console. I've actually got um, group by hash off so we can see in all the individual threats so I don't have to scroll through them. So this has already been seen before by the Sentinel on cloud. Um, so pretty much what has happened is the it's probably been um, a dropper for the actual remote access Trojan. So the dropper itself was not detected by the cloud. However, the dynamic the file that was loaded dynamically into memory um, that that file hash was likely been likely the the case that of course Sentinel wanted to flag it as malicious based on the Sentinel One cloud. Let's go into threat details for here. And let's see if there's any threat details on network actions. Here we go. And here we can start getting into how to create, um, how to extract IOCs. And I'll also show you how to create star rules based on those IOCs. So you will need the complete license for Sentinel One as star rules are based off deep visibility, which is only for complete licenses. Um, let's have a look at this threat. Load that again. So here is the full storyline of the threat. Storyline is an extremely powerful tool. It allows you to completely visualize your um, the malware in your that's how to infect you. Um, obviously, if I was in protect protect or protect detect, I would it would pretty much stop as soon as I tried to run it, or because it was suspicious, it would flag it as a uh, Flag it as suspicious, um, and if you're in the, the protect mode for, sus for suspicious threats, it would remove it instantly. Um, so it looks like it dropped. Now that is interesting. So it's actually decided to ping localhost. Um, it's pinged localhost and very strange. And, okay. Um, quite weird, actually. I wonder why it does that. It's likely to do with uh, something to do with tunneling, I'm guessing. Um, I don't, we don't have the full picture. Um, because this is what Sentinel-1 sees, this is what the behavior is that you can see of it. You'll never be able to read the full code unless you reverse engineer it. Um, but this is more than enough to be able to determine if this is malicious or not. This is everything that um, is happening on the device. So we know that the command and control server is very likely in network actions and it's more than likely this destination IP. What we can do is copy this destination IP, go back into our management console, go to deep visibility, and then it's DST IP, so destination IP contains, you can either do contains or contains or equals a quotation mark, I want to do contains contains this specific value. Let's see if this shows up. Hopefully it does. Here you go. So you can actually see that there's two network actions and you can see in the original threat it's just one network action. So if you actually clear this filter we'll likely see other than four, which is quite interesting. Um, 
So let's. So it's establishing um, four TCP connections to these um, arbitrary, lucky C2 servers. Um, yeah, so we've got the destination IP. Now we know that these that this IP is malicious because it's the source process is linked to a threat and it's probably trying to exfiltrate a bunch of data, trying to you know, gain persistence. I wonder if we go back on our threat, go to overview, onto threat indicators. Yep, it registers itself to become persistent by via win logon and auto run. And that's quite interesting. So let's go back into our deep visibility and create plus correct custom rule. And let's put um, malicious C2 IOC. Um, put rule type on permanent, rule severity on critical. Go next, and you can see it's loaded our query. Next. Now, here, specifically with the networking side of things, you also have access to not just treating it as a threat on malicious or suspicious threat policy, but you also have network quarantine. So if you are, if you are at that point where you don't want any sort of lateral movement, any sort of data exfiltration with zero chance of it happening, click network quarantine. And whenever the star rule enables, um, or it gets triggered on a specific device, it will quarantine that device on the network and only allow it to communicate with the sensor one management console. However, all I'm going to do is treat it as a malicious. Press next. Activate rule immediately after saving. Activate. And now your rule is loaded. It will take a couple of minutes just, just for it to load. However, that is how to extract an IOC and apply it as a star rule. So let's do that one more time with another piece of malware. Let's see if we can find something else. Let's do Agent Tesla. Agent Tesla. Download. And then we can use 7-zip to open up. Now bear in mind, if these, these, are, these are live malware samples, so if you want any threat testing in your own environment, make sure it's segregated and protected. Um, because some some of them like to, some of these uh, instances of malware like to abuse um, known vulnerabilities for escaping VMs or just dodgy, dodgy stuff. So make sure it's protected and segregated. Um, and I'm going to run this straight out from the uh, but the, but the, uh, the zip infected. And since someone has detected, detected it as malicious straight away, Windows Smart Screen is in the way. So let's uh, run it anyway. Let's go back onto our threats or incidents page where we can see our threats. Here we go. Yeah, so um, the agent test for malware is um, .NET, I believe. Um, it says the originating process is from 7-zip. Uh, uh, once again, it's detected by Sentinel-1 Cloud, um, which just means it's file hash. Let's go into the threat details. And let's hope it connected to an IOC. Um, doesn't it look like it's the right one here. Oh, here we go. This is it, the agent sensor one. Again, sensor one cloud. Um, let's, uh, oh, it's doing lots of different things as well. So the originating process is 0F1. Okay, so it's dropping lots of different malware into memory, most likely. Yeah, it looks like it's looks like it's temporary. Um, a few threat details for this specific threat. I wonder if let's 
think we're don't really establishing, establishing any network connections. Um, looks like there aren't any network connections being established here. Maybe the C2 C2 might be dead. Um, the TTP connection didn't establish properly. Oh, here we go. So this has got Conho, so it's most likely going to be here. Okay, so it has actually connected. Um, we were just focusing on some of the sub-processes um, which were detected by Sentinel one anyway. There probably were some um, some malicious libraries that were imported, uh, which created like known malware, but which wasn't polymorphic. Some malware developers haven't got their head screwed on properly, so you'll get stuff that isn't um, isn't polymorphic. You you'll have like the loader. Uh, agent Tesla like with the loader, um, but then it'll create the sub process which, which can be detected by cloud reputation. Um, so let's hope how developers don't learn to do that. Let's copy the destination IP and same process as last time. Go to deep visibility, and the query is already here from last time, and you can paste it, and you can do the exact same process as last time to create the IOCs. Now, if you would like to do multiple IOCs and one star rule to save, save on your star rule usage, I believe you can do multiple in brackets. Let's go back here. Put this back into quotation marks. And then you can simply copy this again. Um, and then from here, you can put some arbitrary um, IP that's linked to a C2 server. So, there you go, for instance, that would be, oh, it's not in a, not in the right format. Um, so that would be like what you'd, what you'd add, for example, this is how you put multiple, um, multiple uh, IOCs into one star rule, um, just simply using the, um, the or. Um, and that is how you extract IOCs and create star rules based off of those IOCs. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, give it a like. You can subscribe to us on the subscribe button. Um, in the description, you can email us directly at info at cybervigilance.uk. Um, you can also add in LinkedIn and send me any questions or put any questions in the comments below. So thank you for watching um, and have a good week.